diseases that can be controlled with vaccines on pigs. A. Erysipelas. A. Erysipelas is caused by a bacterium that is harbored primarily by swine. B. It is also found in the feces of wild and domestic animals, primarily turkeys, as well as in contaminated soil and fish meal. 2. Symptoms. 1. There may be high fever, loss of appetite, depression, skinless ions, and sudden death. 2. Diarrhea may be seen in younger pigs and abortion may occur in gestating animals. b. Chronic form. 1. The primary chronic sign is lameness. The joints enlarge and are usually hard to the touch. 2. Heart valve lesions may cause difficult breathing after mild exertion, coughing, and fatigue. Treatment and control. a. Vaccinate pigs at weaning or when they leave the nursery. b. Vaccinate breeding stock before breeding. c. Use injectable penicillin and erysipelas antitoxin during an outbreak. b. Leptospirosis. 1. Cause. a. Leptospirosis is caused by several closely related organisms that infect a variety of host species. b. It contaminates feed and water after being released in the urine of infected rodents, domestic, and wild animals. c. Infection can occur through intact mucous membranes, mouth, nose, eyes, breaks in the skin, or at breeding from infected urine or semen. 2. Symptoms. A. The disease is mild and often overlooked. B. Late gestation abortion, stillborn, or weak pigs may occur in a susceptible herd. C. Fever and lack of appetite may appear in swine of all ages and a nervous form of the disease may affect suckling pigs. 3. Treatment and control. A. Avoid bringing infected pigs into a healthy herd. B. Buy animals from lepto-free herds. Blood test them before buying. Testing identifies hogs that have had the disease, but it does not identify carriers. C. Isolate sows that abort, bury, or bum all aborted material, and disinfect housing. D. Keep swine away from other animals. E. Avoid urine contamination of feed and watering equipment. F. Keep stock out of poorly drained pastures, slow-moving streams, and ponds. G. Practice strict rodent control. H. Injectable dihydrostreptomycin is the drug of choice. High feed levels of tetracycline may be used as an additional preventive measure in a high-risk herd. I. Vaccinate with a 5-strain leptospirosis vaccine 2 to 3 weeks before breeding. J. Consult a veterinarian in case of a disease outbreak. C. Porcine parvovirus, PPV. 1. Cause. A. The disease develops mainly when seronegative sows are exposed oronasally to the virus during the first half of gestation. B. Fetuses are infected before their immune system develops. C. There is no evidence that infection of swine other than during gestation is of any clinical or economic significance. D. The virus is common among swine and is enzootic in most herds that have been tested. 2. Symptoms. A. The major clinical response is maternal reproductive failure. B. The pathologic sequence depends on when exposure occurs during gestation. C. Dams may return to estrus, fail to farrow despite being anstrus, farrow few pigs per litter, or farrow a large proportion of mummified fetuses. These signs can reflect embryonic or fetal death or both. D. The only outward sign may be a decrease in maternal abdominal girth when fetuses die at mid-gestation or later and their associated fluids are reabsorbed. E. Other manifestations are maternal infertility, abortion, stillbirth, neonatal death, and reduced neonatal vitality but they are a minor component of the disease. F. Mummified fetuses in a litter can prolong gestation and the farrowing interval. G. 
there is no evidence that fertility or libido of boars is altered by the infection. 3. Treatment and Control A. Vaccination is the only way to ensure that gilts develop active immunity before conception. B. Vaccinate several weeks before conception but after the disappearance of passively acquired colostral antibodies that could interfere with the development of active immunity. C. Vaccinate boars to reduce the spread of the virus. D. Pseudorabies, Oyeski's disease. 1. Cause. A. Pseudorabies is caused by a herpes virus which affects the nervous and respiratory systems. Severe itching and self-mutilation are seen in most species, but rarely in SWME. B. Oyeski first recognized pseudorabies as a disease of cattle and dogs in Hungary in 1902. C. It is an acute, frequently fatal disease that affects most species of domestic and wild animals. Man and certain apes are resistant to it. D. Swine are the natural hosts of the virus and they can die as a result of the disease. Abortion is sometimes caused by pseudorabies. 2. Symptoms A. Pigs less than 3 weeks old 1. The disease is characterized by sudden death with few, if any, clinical signs. 2. Death is usually preceded by dullness, loss of appetite, vomiting, weakness, incoordination, convulsions, and a fever which may exceed 105 degrees Fahrenheit 3. If vomiting and diarrhea occur, the disease closely resembles transmissible gastroenteritis, TGE. 4. In pigs less than 2 weeks old, death losses frequently approach 100%. V. Pigs that become infected before birth, die within 2 days after being born, occasionally after violent shaking and shivering. 6. Pigs infected immediately after birth may show clinical signs within the first two days of life and usually die before they are five days old. b. Pigs three weeks to five months old 1. After three weeks of age, pigs develop some resistance and mortality may decrease from 50% to less than 5%. 2. Death losses vary with different strains of the virus. Severe losses may occur. Even in grown pigs. 3. Fever is the most prominent clinical sign. It is followed by loss of appetite, listlessness, labored breathing, excessive salivation, vomiting, trembling, and incoordination of the hind legs. 4. Sneezing, rubbing of the nose, and coughing may occur along with a clear to yellowish nasal discharges. V. Convulsions precede death. 6. Infected pigs that recover will be slow to reach market weight. C. Mature pigs 1. The disease is not as severe but death may occur with some strains of the virus. 2. Symptoms include fever, nasal discharges, sneezing, nose rubbing, coughing, vomiting, and diarrhea. 3. Trembling, incoordination, and itching occasionally occur and blindness may follow pseudorabies infection. 4. Sows infected in the early stages of pregnancy may return to heat because of death and reabsorption of their fetuses. 6. Sows infected in mid-pregnancy may eventually abort munonified fetuses, whereas sows infected late in pregnancy often abort or give birth to weak, shaker, or stillborn pigs. 3. Transmission A. Pseudorabies is spread mainly by direct contact between swine, the nose and mouth are the main entry points for the virus. b. Nasal discharges and saliva contain the virus. Drinking water, bedding, and other objects such as clothing and instruments may become contaminated. c. The virus may be spread by the movement of air within buildings, and for short distances outside depending upon climatic conditions. d. Recovered pigs remain carriers of the virus and may infect susceptible pigs or cattle. Severe cattle losses have occurred as a result of contact with carrier swine. 4. Control A. Minimize infection by strictly controlling the movement of people, animals, and objects onto swine premises. B. 
disinfect work clothes and boots. Keep cats, dogs, and other animals away from pigs. C. Add breeding stock only from herds that are free of pseudorabies. Test all new stock, isolate them for at least 30 days, and then retest them. D. Never bring untested feeder pigs onto premises where farrowing operations exist. E. During an outbreak 1. Quarantine the premises, control all movement of people and animals. 2. Separate the healthy pigs from the sick and control movement between them. 3. Dispose of dead pigs by deep burial or incineration. 4. To prevent spreading the infection to other farms, sell recovered pigs only for slaughter. 4. Parasite control A. External parasites 1. Characteristics A. External parasites of swine live on or below their skin. B. Lice, ticks, fleas, and mites are the external parasites that have the most economic impact on the swine industry. Some species of biting flies and screwworms, fly larvae, are included in this group. C. Most external parasites feed on the blood and tissue fluids of the host. Lice and mange mites are so dependent upon their hosts that if removed, they die in a short time. D. Many external parasites carry disease-producing organisms. Some cause skin irritations which become infected. 2. Hog lice, Hematopinosuis, A. Lice are nearly one-fourth inch long and slate blue in color. B. They are first noticed inside hog's ears or in the folds of skin of the neck. They are also found inside the legs, near the body. C. Lice torment hogs and cause their skin to become thick, cracked, tender, and sore. They pierce the animal's skin and suck their blood. D. Treatment and control. 1. Control lice with chemicals that can be purchased as emulsifiable concentrates, wettable powders, or dusts. Follow label recommendations. 2. Spray the pigs in small groups. Confine them to facilitate proper treatment. 3. Use equipment large enough to wet the animals thoroughly. If the temperature is low, they can be sprayed or dipped, then held until dry. 4. To control the swine mange caused by hog lice, spray the facilities at the same time the animals are treated. V. Repeat the treatment after 14 to 21 days if needed. 3. Mites. A. Mites can be seen through a good magnifying glass. B. They spread rapidly and cause hogs to rub and scratch. Hair bristles become stiff and stand upright. C. The skin around the eyes, ears, and along the top of the neck and back becomes scruffy, inflamed, scabby, raw, and cracked. D. Mites burrow into the skin, making thread-like tunnels up to an inch in length. Follow the same treatment and control program used for lice. 4. Fleas. A. Any type of flea can infest swine. The flea which attacks man and the stick tight flea of poultry are the most common in swine herds. B. Flea bites cause severe irritation to the skin of infested swine. The consequences of an irritation are anemia, restlessness, poor growth, and poor feed conversion. C. Treatment and control. 1. Treat the infested hog as well as the breeding places of the fleas. 2. Bum or treat infested bedding, litter, trash, and dirt. 3. Practice good management and sanitation because fleas may survive for several months without an animal host. 5. Ticks. A. Ticks may be found on any part of the hog's body but are often seen around the ears, neck, flank, anus, and vagina. B. They are a source of annoyance and irritation and are vectors for disease. They can cause serious economic losses. C. Anemia will occur if ticks are present in sufficient numbers because they suck the animal's blood. D. Tick saliva contains a local irritant which they inject into the site of attachment. The saliva also contains a systemic toxin which causes paralysis and nervous system problems. E. 
Severely infested swine try to alleviate the irritation by rubbing, scratching, licking, or biting themselves. This results in raw areas which are susceptible to secondary bacterial invasion. E. Treatment and Control 1. A combination of good swine management and sanitation will reduce tick infestations. 2. Eliminate the parasites on the animal by using a chlorinated hydrocarbon insecticide. 3. Apply the insecticide to the premises and to hedgerows, grassy plots, and pastures. 6. Screwworms, myosis. A. Cause. 1. Screwworms result when fly larvae invade the hog's tissue or organs. 2. Adult flies are attracted by cuts, scratches, and wounds, especially the umbilical cord of the newborn. 3. The flies lay eggs in the cuts and the larvae invade the injured tissue. b. Treatment and control. 1. Good management practices and the effective use of insecticides are the most effective prevention. 2. Use a larvicide which kills the screwworms but is not toxic to the pigs. Chlorinated hydrocarbon smears are very effective. 3. Keep the facilities repaired so that hogs do not cut themselves and become infected. V. Clip the milk teeth of newborn pigs to avoid injury to the sow's teats and udder. 6. Perform castration and ear tagging when the screwworm problem is at a idle yum. B. Internal parasites. Internal parasites spend part of their life cycle inside the body of the animal. They cause serious economic losses and can kill swine. 1. Roundworms, Ascarid. A. Characteristics. 1. Roundworms are found wherever swine are raised but they can also infect cattle, sheep, and squirrels. 2. The larvae infect and undergo partial development in almost any mammal which ingests the eggs. 3. Roundworms are the internal parasite that have the most economic impact on the swine industry. b. Roundworm life cycle. 1. Pigs eat embryonate roundworm eggs which hatch in the small intestine. 2. During the next week, larvae bore into the lining of the gut, enter the blood vessels, move to the liver, and travel to the lungs via the blood. 3. The larvae grow and change in the lungs. About two weeks after the ingestion of the embryonate egg, the larvae migrate to the trachea and are swallowed. 4. They reach the small intestine where they mature and rapidly reach adulthood. The adults produce more eggs and the cycle is complete. v. The life cycle from egg to egg takes about 50 days. Infected swine sometimes pass eggs or adult worms. c. Symptoms 1. Signs of the disease are most noticeable when it occurs in young pigs. 2. A soft, moist cough starts one week after the pigs are infected. 3. About four days after infection, there is a fever of Lhasa F which lasts for several days. 4. Failure to gain weight, lack of appetite, an unthrifty appearance, and jaundice all may be symptoms of roundworm infestation. v. The presence of runts in a number of litters is also an indicatorian of the disease. v. Tissue changes caused by roundworm invasion are most easily seen in the liver and lungs. 7. The liver shows gross scarring which appears as white or gray areas on the surface. 8. The lungs may show small hemorrhages or evidence of pneumonia. 9. There is little evidence of damage to the intestine except when the number of adult worms becomes so great that the gut is completely blocked. d. Transmission and control. 1. Transmission occurs between pigs via the infective roundworm egg. 2. Roundworm control includes a systematic worming program, good sanitation, and proper animal husbandry for all the swine in an operation. 3. Deworm sows prior to farrowing to reduce infection in baby pigs. 4. It may be helpful to raise the swine in total confinement on a cement or slatted floor. v. Scrub the farrowing pens and hog houses as often as possible.
Thanks for watching, share, comment, and subscribe for more update.